This week on Fishette, John reveals overlooked structural sweet spots that produce scores of midwinter walleye after early season hotspots cool off. I look at it now I see another one feels like a decent fish all of a sudden these fish came came up off the bottom and you know I, I thought it was just one good one <laughs> not a giant good eater size walleye though but you know what there were a couple of them that's a great fish right there that's what we're after today is you know just a bunch of good you know midwinter eater size walleyes and you know maybe we'll get lucky and get some decent ones along the way too some bigger fish but i'll tell you what that's an awesome fish no matter where you go any day of the week that's a 14 inch 15 inch walleye we'll pale him but man i'll tell you picking locations at this time of the year it can get a little bit tricky because what's happened is a lot of that shallow stuff that was going really really crazy for a little while is just not going that good anymore it's it's done these fish have started moving and once they move and they move out into deeper water a lot of times they roam a lot more than what they were when they were up in that shallow stuff. So one of the things I try to do when I'm picking locations is it, you look at locations from a standpoint of just extensions as the winter goes on. And all I'm doing is fishing a spot right now where earlier this winter I was just fishing further up it. I'm just giving the walleyes a chance to slide out that structure, but as they slide out they've got far more basin all the way around them. I'm getting out toward the tip of this structure now. So ultimately you don't have to just pack and go out past everybody else, past other structures, past the end of the structure you're on and fish with the crowds out on, on that mid lake stuff. What you can find a lot of times is these fish will just slide out and then they'll camp, they'll stay put. And here's, here's one of the big reasons they're more willing to stay put on shoreline structures at, at the end of the extension. In the winter, you don't get a bunch of temperature variances in the water, but in the summertime you do. And what happens is eventually minnows just have to keep moving due to the temperature changes, okay? The walleyes will keep moving along with them. But here's the thing, in the winter, a lot of times when those fish start off in those spots, you caught them in the fall, up there shallower, all they'll do is they'll get out to that extension of that same spot, and what happens is they'll stay there. And the reason a lot of them will stay there is because you don't have the big temp swings. So the minnows are gonna stay put as well. So you can end up in a deal where you can have fish scattered all across the lake by midwinter, and that's the way it usually is. You've got guys fishing all over, but don't overlook these spots because these spots, these extensions off of shoreline structures can stay good all year long. Right on it. There he is. Got him. Oh yeah, feels like a pretty good fish. This is just a case of fish just coming through periodically <laughs> and just keep, keep, keep dropping back down on them. This one here, you know, he didn't look long. This fish, he's just wandering through and to, you know, a lot of times fish will come up off the bottom. This fish didn't come from the bottom. This fish came from the side. All of a sudden he was right there and I just kind of jiggled up above him a little bit and got him to keep coming. This feels like a really good fish. I hope it's a walleye. Oh yeah, great eye. Look at that, awesome fish. Look at that, ate that glow spoon. I switched over to this pink taste glow spoon and I've gotten a couple on it now. And that's just a question of what we've talked about is just keeping up with Keeping up with the different things, you know. One minute you're keeping up with action and trying to make fish bite, but the next minute you're keeping up with things like color. Look at that, awesome walleye. That's just, that's just a, a, you know, a typical walleye that you can catch when you're just, you know, working fish that are moving through. Because this fish here, he's roaming. He's on the move and he's eating. He's eating nonstop. You know, you take a lot of your 14, 15 inch fish, they're meandering, waiting their turn, but a fish like that one right there, a better fish, he's on the move and he's constantly eating. There he is right there. Oh yeah. Feels like another one of those cookie cutters we've been getting all day. Color change right back. You, you know, it's funny how this works. Sometimes, and I think we all, oh yeah, great eye, look at that. 
better than that cookie cutter one we've been getting all day. Awesome fish, look at that. Man, I'll tell you, the, the pail's starting to look real good now. Here, here's the thing. I think so often, and, and I know I used to do this a lot, and I, I don't do it as much anymore. I've gotten better about this, but you know, I, I tell people to not have a favorite color, but here's what I will tell you. Actually, go ahead and start with your favorite color, and, and here's why. If you're changing colors enough throughout the day, you're going to find out the fish's favorite color, but start with that confidence lure that you have, and you know, one of my favorite colors this year has been this new chartreuse bloodline, but what I do now and I do this more often than, than I ever have before, is whether I'm fishing in the winter or in the summertime, if I start with something that's been really good for me, we'll, we'll use the, the phrase of favorite, okay? If this color has just been awesome for me this year, there's a good chance I'm gonna start here. But if they don't bite on it right away, I'm not necessarily gonna put it back in the tray and be done with it for the day. I've always got rods tied up back here and I switched over to this pink dace and I caught fish on this pink dace. But what I'm doing now is every time I see fish that I'm not catching, I'm just switching a color. And that's what happened here. I saw a fish for a little bit, didn't catch them. All of a sudden fish was gone. So now I don't know for sure if that was the same fish I just caught or not, but here's what I do know. I dropped down this same color. I just, I, I left this chartreuse bloodline one sitting on a rod right behind me. This has been a hot color for me all year. So I don't want to just put it back in the box because I'm afraid if I put it back in the box, I might not tie it back on. So that's why you always see me having extra rods back here, but go back and forth between colors. Cause when you do get dialed in on one that works for this fish or one that works for that fish, a lot of times you'll get in a neighborhood and you'll have two or three hot colors during the day versus just going one at a time and putting them back in the box. Because when you go one at a time, put them back in the box, there's a chance that what's going to happen is you gave a fish one chance. You gave one fish one chance and then you made a decision based on that fish. But if you leave that color out and keep going back down with it, you'll find out that different colors different cadences, different actions, whatever it may be, are gonna trigger different fish throughout the day. And that's because each fish is individual, but it's also because fish change their mood and their preferences all day long. There he is right there. Oh yeah. You know what, that one feels like a little bit better fish. Oh yeah, that's definitely a better fish. I don't know how much better, but he's definitely on the better side, oh yeah, look at that. That's awesome. There's nothing better than when you set the hook and you get to hear the drag squeal a little bit. Oh yeah, good eye, look at that, awesome. Oh, settle down there, buddy. Look at that, just hooked right in the side of the lip. Look at that, what an awesome fish. I mean, he ain't a giant, but you know what? He's 21, I bet. What a great fish, I'll tell you. This is so fun when you can come out and get on a bite like this. And, and you know, midwinter, so many people think that ice fishing's done and that, that that's it. There's nothing more to do and, and the bite's over. But I'll tell you what, fish like that, you just make a few adjustments, you fish a little bit differently. You put yourself on the deeper side of the structures. You pay attention to what's happening on any given day. We'll get that guy back in the water. There's just a little bit of blood on him, not much, but he's gonna be just fine. But you just set yourself up in those right spots. There he goes and fish like that one. Man, they're gonna bite. Pick yourself up some of these glow spoons. This is just an awesome lure. I have not caught as many fish on any lure in my life as I have since we brought these glow spoons out a couple years ago. They're just awesome. Added a couple new colors this year. Look for those new colors. This is one of them right here, the Chartreuse Bloodline. Man, fill a pail up like that. Catch a good one like that. What an awesome day of fishing right there. That is just cool.